which are green on the way I've set up my syntax highlighting. Um, some of them are executable files, which are red, um, and the directories, which are blue. The way you would actually know them if you don't have syntax highlighting on is if you go all the way back over to the side, there's this little line of gibberish, and there's a D at the beginning, which is the directory. That means you can CD into it. If um, there is a bunch of X's, or at least one X, We'll get, we might get more into this later in terms of the permissions bit. So that means it's an executable program. Um, and the other parts here, read, uh, R and W stand for read and write. Um, there's, a, there's a lot more. This is kind of like a rabbit hole that goes way down and this is what's called permissions. Um, but most of the time, all you're going to care about is kind of the first four characters. Because that, that actually corresponds to your permission. Or everyone's permission? I don't remember which order it is. Anyway. Um, yep. Oh, and then there's some other ones. Like you might see other stuff here. This is what's called a symbolic link. We're not going to talk about that too much. It's just a hacker shortcut. Yeah, it's kind of like a shortcut or an alias. Um, okay, so let's move around. So let's do some common places you're going to want to go. Um, almost if you're using uh, a GUI on that computer, like for example, if it's on your computer, uh, or if you're connecting to, a, or if you're, you know, you're working on a system that has a, a desktop. Um, there's like a desktop directory in the downloads directory. Let's go take a look at my desktop. So how do I get in there? Change directory. And then it starts with the Unix uh, just, uh, uh, bash like file system, usually case sensitive, not always. The one I'm using is. So type D, and then what was that magic thing? Tab. The first time it makes a ball noise, then it tells me the things I can do to complete it. And if I type it enough, and I hit tab, it finishes it for me. That will save me so much typing. Especially when you have file names that are like incredibly long, like mine. Okay. We're here. We do PWD again. We see. Right? If I do LS, I see a little bit of stuff. If I do this, I see more stuff. Do you notice I saw two things here? This one I actually saw five things. It's kind of weird, isn't it? That was what the little A does for all, which we couldn't see above because the, the list was too long. Um, in Unix land, if something begins with a period, it is hidden. That's when we say A, we get all the things, we get the things with periods too. It's a weird convention. It's kind of like using Twitter, um, where like an at means something and a pound means something else, and the dot before an at sign means something. It's kind of that, except it's kind of backwards from Twitter, isn't it? Anyway. That's moving around. What else was on that slide that I haven't talked about yet? So we've moved around. We haven't made a directory yet. Let's go make a directory. Um, and let's do push and pop. Okay. So, go back to my home directory. Um, and let's make a directory. MK, dir. Oh, and tab complete also works with commands. So I don't quite remember, but I remember it begins with MK. MKB, go tell me. And if you do something silly, like what are all the commands that begin with M? Um, well, okay, M wasn't that bad. Sometimes it'll tell you, like, there are 75,000 options. Are you sure you want me to list them? <laughs> no. Because it'll, it'll, it'll do it eventually, but it's going to run for like minutes probably. So you can use tab complete, like tab. Your tab finger is going to get kind of tired. So let's make a directory. Actually, everyone do this. So if you're not connected to Gray, now. You're in? Cool. Where are you in Gray? My home. You're in your home directory. Is everyone in their home directory? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make a directory. I'm going to make directory shaky. This tab will be one more for shaky because it doesn't exist yet. So tab completion is super smart. Um, you do PWD. See where we are, and we can see the into shaky. I have multiple shaky directories, it seems. And PWD again. Pretty cool. Okay. There was one other thing I haven't mentioned yet, which is push push the end pop piece. Push directory and pop directory. This is really useful if you're kind of like, you just want to take a quick peek out. Like say, like for example, this was not an easy directory to get to. This is a really deep directory, you just CD seven or eight times. But you want to go check something in your home directory. It's like, oh, I just downloaded a file and I want to, want to copy it in here. Push D will save you a lot of time. You push D where you want to go. For 
example, I want to push D back to my home directory, or if I want to take a hacker shortcut, push D tilde. And what it says is tilde, tilde GP. So as you push new directories, it will add them to this kind of list of things. Which is great because you're saving them. They're kind of like little bookmarks. And then if you type copy, it goes to the last one you were at. So I use this a lot when I like download a file and I need to go back and like, you know, I need to copy it into the current work in the directory where I'm doing my project or something like that. Push the and copy, you can save you some time doing CD stuff so you don't waste time. Um, you can also use it just to copy and paste stuff off the screen. That works too. I do that a lot. I know real hackers don't, but that's okay. Okay, so we all have a directory called Cheeky and we know where it is. Let's go do something more interesting. We talked about magic stuff. File stuff. Okay. We're going to do magic stuff. File stuff. We just did magic stuff. Now it's time for file stuff. There are a few commands. Um, two of them are built in, and then one is actually a program. It's super useful. Um, copying files around. CP. If I want to copy foo to bar.txt, you can do that. Copy foo to bar. Um, I can also move files. Move. Um, move works on directories. Copy does not by default. If you want copy to work on a directory, there's this recursive thing um, you can do, copy that R. And we'll, we'll probably have that later. Uh, but we don't really have any files to work with, and we want something fun to work with. So there's this command called curl. Um, curl is, uh, if you've ever programmed in PHP, probably sounds familiar, although the usage is completely different. Um, other um, programs have, a, other same systems have a tool called wget, which you may have heard of. It's pretty similar. I'm going to go through curl just because it's available in more places. It's a more common utility. And what curl does is you go, you paste in a URL, an address, something from the address bar in your browser, and it will go download it and display it on your screen. And we use a little shortcut, which is called a redirection, which you don't need to worry about too much right now, is a little arrow, boop, would be at greater than sign, and then a place you want it to go to. So we can use that to download stuff. Okay, let's apply some of this stuff. So there is a directory with a very long name. I should have given it a shorter one. Um, I'm going to get a tiny row for that right now. I think we're browsing. Oh, wait, I don't have internet. Okay, we're just going to type. <laughs> I'm sorry to make you type long things. Go ahead, type this incredibly long URI into your browser. If you are watching the video, go open the slides and just click on it, because the slides are going to be up there for hours. We'll make sure to, to put them in like the show notes or something. We will. OK, so we're going to do stuff. We've already done exercise one. We've already made the directory. But when you go to that URL, you're going to see a few files. We're going to download all of them with curl. And I promise this is the only really long URL you have to type. In the browser? Or in the so you want to download them on the terminal. So on the browser, you have them. Okay. Um, so what you're going to do is, so if you go to, you can navigate to it in the browser. So if you go there, it should bring up directory listing. So just navigate. OK, so there are four files there. Three of them are plain text, and one is a zip file. Download all of them into the directory you just created, the shaky directory, or shakes, or whatever you want to call it. So if you click on, so if you go click on the back button to get back to that directory listing. There we go. So um, if you right click on one of those blue links, there'll be blue links up there. I would pull it up. No way I can't. But I can bring up the file system. So. Oh, 
pay no attention to this. I'm going to space it out there. There is one of those. Okay, so when you go there, And you do shaky? Can you do it wrong? Uh, Shakes. Hmm. I've not set up this presentation for local very well. Anyway, so when you go there, there will be four links on the screen. You will right click on them and you will copy them to your then you're going to go to your terminal. One by one. One by one. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's not a really easy way to, to suck them all down at once. Um, although we could write that if you want. But it's, there's no standard way of doing it, so it's going to be kind of hacky. But we're doing hacky stuff, so we can do that, we can do that at the end if you like. Um, copy link location. I wonder what that does now. Copy the link. Location. Yep. Copy. So it's going to depend on your browser. Copy link location in Firefox, apparently. In Chrome, it's just going to be copy link. Um, so you're going to want to download it to complete.zip. So you want to give it the file name. So instead of so you are you you're in shaky already. So you want the arrow to point to complete.zip because that's going to be the name of the file that it's putting it into. Because it's, uh, we want to download complete.zip, but we want to save it as complete.zip. Oh, okay. So where do you go to download it? So go to your terminal and type curl space the paste in your I, URL, space greater than, or the, just the symbol. Oh. Little arrow. Space. Oh, you don't want the whole directory. You want individual files. So if we go back to the listing, so you've got the, the name of the entire directory. You want the next clue, because that's the character. So copy, cancel. So right click, copy, link location. Go back to your terminal. Yeah, just type, type control C because you still have your little command there. So just control C. Control C kind of like aborts the command if you ever need to. Control, control C. Control V does not huh? paste. Control V does not paste. It depends on how putty is set up. If you right click, if you middle click, it yeah, might paste. Yeah. It yeah. Um, depends how your terminal is set up. Um, they have different ways of mapping the differences between the two systems. Yeah, it's control C then paste. Yep, you're getting them all done. Control C then paste. Uh, so. Do curl, space, and then paste. Then you know click, space. Okay, so that's complete to that, that's good. Hit space, and then do an arrow, space. And now we want to save it as the same file name, so type complete.zip again. Okay, now repeat that process for all the text files. This is the only thing I can't actually demo on screen, but I Assuming Verizon service works here, I will demo. And we can use tab to complete the text line. Hmm? We can be using tab to complete the, uh, the text lines. Command. Not necessarily. This one, you actually can't. Okay, because, because it is curl. Because it's curl and it's going out to the far internet, and it is not, uh, the tab completion is not smart enough to tab complete your eyes which would be amazing. Um, I don't think any shell will try and do that. And then, then it's there. Space. And then helmet.txt. A couple more, yes. Repeat it two more times. And you have them down? OK. So do you want to try to do the bonus? Unzip. Okay, sure. how do you think you would unzip something, not knowing the, what command it is? Uh, okay. Is it 
Let's, let's hope this works in gray. So the first thing I would try is just type unzip. And hit enter and see what happens. Just enter. Cool, you have a program called unzip. Type unzip, and then this is actually help text. So, um, unzip and options, desires, oh, wait, oh. Just try typing unzip space and then complete that zip. Cool, we expanded it. It worked. Okay. Often for utilities, like just guessing will usually get you there. You can also, if you want to know if a program exists, there's a command called which. So you can type which and then a command. It'll tell you if it exists, it'll tell you where it is. So try typing which on which, like which, which one? Hat. Not uh, like a which, like pointing uh, hat, like which one, like which one. So type which space unzip. Unzip. It tells you, yay, you have an unzip program. Which is kind of cool. Okay. Let me download it. Wait, my computer back up. Oh, wait, can you? No attention to how many characters are in the password. Don't make you forget. Don't too far, far away. So I'm going to run through these for the sake of the video. Too bad, you were playing next songs. So video. Stand by, I gotta catch up. Possible, we'll get rid of some of this in editing. Maybe. Okay, so we're gonna go do that exercise now. So I'm gonna take this really long URL. I am absolutely. Uh, you're not showing. Blue. Oh no, I'm blue. Thank you for this place. Try again. Okay. Close these things. So, here I am on this slide again. I am here, so I'm going to copy that link address. I'm going to paste it, and there are four files here. I'll make these bigger so you can actually see them. There are four files here and a parent directory. This is just a directory listing from a web browser. This is like, I don't have an index file here, so it's just showing me everything in the directory. I'm going to download these. I'm going to Make that no longer full screen so I can see back and forth easily. I'm in shaky. My shaky directory is empty. It only has itself and its parents, little shortcuts. So we're going to copy these. So I'm going to go right click. I'm going to copy link address. Firefox, this was, was copy link as or something. It'll be something different in each one. So curl, paste, to. It's going to go boop, boop, download it. I do LSHAL again, I can see it's there. And it's like a reasonable size, it's a couple megabytes. Oh, here's a neat trick. There's all sorts of different modifiers you can do. What do you think H does? H stands for human readable. It changes the sizes, so they tell it to you in a, a, a unit, because that's really hard to read. 1.9 M, 1.9 megabytes. Yeah, the dash H parameter means human readable in so many programs. Copy link address, hamlet.txt. Curl. Two more. Curl. And one more. Here we go. If we look, we have four files there. We have a bonus. You got the bonus. Do you want to try doing the bonus? Sure. Okay, so the bonus was unzip complete that zip. So we, going in with no knowledge, let's take an educated guess at how to unzip something. The unzip utility you might have in your computers might be different, but first thing you're going to want to try is unzip. If you hit enter, Hey, it tells me a bunch of stuff. What does this mean? This means that there is a program called unzip on my computer, which turns out to be on gray also. Actually, it's the same program. Very convenient. Um, so if you have a program and you, you give it, um, you just say the name, it's usually going to try and give you some help text. It's usually very 
tiny amount, very compact, um, not terribly useful. Next question. Yeah. Uh, those, these optional programs that comes in, that's on, like in Putty or is that on Gray? Ah, you can't run Putty. That's actually running on Gray. Okay. Yeah. I'll explain that in a moment once we finish uh, unzipping this stuff. So, uh, so let's try unzip. Usually, like, the most obvious way to use it is usually the right one. If not, it will tell you what you've done wrong. Very rarely will it cause things to break. So complete, I use tab completion. Unzip, complete that zip. Let's see what happens. I've inflated it. If we do our LSAL again, we see that it unzipped from that 1.9 megabyte zip file. It gave us a 5.3 megabyte text file, which is Shakespeare's complete works. That I downloaded from Project Gutenberg. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a sidebar and talk about how what's actually happening here with the shell and what's happening in your putty. Since it sounds like a lot of you are using putty, um, so what putty is is putty is an SSH client, um, which means I'm going to use some whiteboard here. probably see this part. So you have, you have your laptop or desktop. I'll use a little laptop to describe it. I'll make it bigger. I'll try and use all of the available space I have. Actually, I will make this easier. Another command that's very useful. Clear. Clears the screen. Although, honestly, it's still back up there. Just scroll it down. But now I have more time, place to write. So you have a laptop. In your laptop, you're running Pudge. So I'm going to draw a picture of your laptop. I'm not really an artist. So there is your laptop. Your laptop has in it a program called Putty. There's a little window, but that's just running on your laptop. And what Putty does is Putty uh, goes connects to a network of some kind, maybe the internet. Probably just a local network in this case. It goes out to a server, which will be like in Iraq somewhere. Is it great with an E or an A? It's E. E. A. A? A? I haven't touched it in years. Gray got question mark. Okay, so we have Gray. Gray is sitting in Iraq somewhere. So when you, um, what Putty is, is Putty is what's called as, like, it is an SSH client. It's essentially um, a security protocol called SSH plus a terminal. Um, whenever, when, whenever you're running a command or whatever, you're actually running it up here on Gray. So when you connect, um, what's happening is Putty is going, hey, um, here's a username and a password. I have user foo, my password is bar. Um, let me in. And since you gave it a good username and a good password, Putty connects to Gray over that network. Gray says, yes, come on in. And Gray sends back the characters that appear on that screen. So then whenever you type in a command, it is just like you are sitting on Gray with the monitor and keyboard attached. It's just taking that input, each character of input, and sending it over to Gray. So we do ls dash a l. What's actually happening is when you type, the ls is going all the way over to Gray. And Gray is going, OK, you typed L. You need to display an L character. So what you'll see is if you're on a slow network, when you hit L, it might take a second for that L to appear. Because um, the terminal you're using is incredibly stupid. Um, it doesn't even know that when you type L, it's supposed to display L. It actually makes Gray do that. So whenever you're doing a program or anything like that, it's operating on Gray itself. And this, is kind of, this is a really important concept because um, what if the way Gray connects to the network is different than the way your laptop connects to the network? Like, for example, if you're logged in in your web browser and you try and use curl from Gray, Gray is not logged into that same network the same way. So imagine everything you're typing into your buddy is just like you are sitting next to Gray with a keyboard and a screen typing it in right there. Um, and that will make like, a lot more stuff make sense. Why things are slow? Why are they I'm glad that's helpful. That's an important concept. Okay, any other questions? 
That was a great question. Thank you. I've got an excuse to try drawing a little one. Okay, let's move on to the next slide of things. Pull the screen down, can I? Catch you. Shake you. Okay, so slides of stuff. We've done an exercise, yay, we're this far along. What's next? Philosophy break. Hey, that was perfect timing. We kind of did some philosophy of that's a putty. Do I have anything to help me remember? Oh, here, we're actually, you do have something. Oh, that's a philosopher by the way. I hope, I, I hope I'm not so out of touch that my names don't make sense anymore. Philosopher is wondering, is, what the heck is all these programs? Why are they there? Why are they so weird? And um, the philosophy of POSIX tools is uh, sometimes better is not actually better. Sometimes worse is actually better. Um, so the way these things work is uh, these, these, these tools you have on your thing, um, I'll explain what POSIX means in a minute, um, is you have